What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John plays here and today we're gonna be taking a look at the wild area. So for those of you who may be picking up and playing this game today, I know you're very excited. I'm very excited too. And there's a few things and nuances I've learned about the wild area that I think you should know when you start out the game. Now your first time in the wild area, you're only going to be on foot and you're going to be trekking it and you're going to be really slow, super duper slow. It's up to you if you want to wait until you start to explore the wild area, until you have the bicycle, which from Monast Oak City, you do the, uh, the story cutscenes, you make your way to Route 3, you make your way to the Galar Mine, you make your way to Route 4, you have your first gym battle at Turfield. And then at Route 5, right after the Pokemon Nursery is when you're going to be able to get the bicycle. Now the bicycle is a game changer. It makes you go so much faster than just walking around. Oh, thanks Diglett. When you're playing, you're gonna notice evolved Pokemon not in the grass. Those are very strong looking Pokemon. If you try to uh, take one down, there's a very good chance it could kill you very easily. Unless of course you did a whole bunch of raid battles and you spammed all of your EXP candy into your starter Pokemon. At that point, you can pretty much just take care of them no problem. What's ironic though is I'm not allowed to catch this Pokemon because I don't have the required gym badges, but I'm 10 levels higher than it and I can take it out in, in two hits. Essentially, they don't want you to overplay the wild area, especially at the beginning of the game because at the end of the game, the wild area opens up so much. However, if you decide to take all of your candy and give it to one Pokemon and just keep leveling it up and leveling it up, it makes it so much easier to level up the rest of your team. Oh, Score Bunny's evolving. I don't want to do that yet. But any Pokemon that you find in the grass in the starting areas, and by the starting areas, I mean down here, which is the rolling fields, up here, which is East Lake Axwell, and a little bit of West Lake Axwell, these areas tend to have more mm, lower level Pokemon and won't wipe your team super easily. Now, there are some areas that have little corners tucked away, like right here that will usually have a unique Pokemon spawn. Now these Pokemon, remember rare Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Kind of the same concept here. These Pokemon do not show up on the Pokedex. So if I had, whatever that's name is, registered in my Pokedex, and if I were to look at its location, it would not state that it's right here. Instead, the Pokedex only shows you areas where it's in the encounter table, like in this grass right here. So any Pokemon that you see here in the overworld, those are unique. Well, I'll call them rare spawns because I don't know the official name yet because I didn't get the official strategy guide yet. Next to trees, small bushes and such, you're going to find a lot of dropped items. A lot of these are mushrooms or apples, things like that, that could be used to sell or could be used for cooking. I don't want to mess with that Pangoro right now. Oh, let's talk about berry trees. Great. So for berry trees, there is a formula to berry trees. If you shake it, you want to pay attention to how much the tree is shaking afterwards. You see how it's shaking very infrequently? We're gonna shake it again. Still shaking infrequently. Now it's shaking frequently. That means that I should stop shaking the tree. If I were to go ahead and continue shaking the tree, I would get an encounter. I believe the encounters are Squovit and also um, Cherum. Now, you're gonna find this guy right here. He does a few things. He has what's called the Rotom Rally, which is a way for you to ride your bike from one area to the next. And with that, you can earn Watts. You can do a makeover, which looks at the first Pokemon in your party and will recolor your bicycle outfit to the color of the first Pokemon. Actually, this character I'm making blue, so I'll put Sobble in the front. There we go. These guys also allow you to improve your bicycle. For a certain amount of watts that they charge, you can improve your bike, which will then make it go slightly faster. And I think the recharge time is slower, but also you can choose to spend your watts. Now, wishing pieces are super magical stones that you could throw inside of a raid den and that will then cause a max raid battle to begin. You have a whole bunch of TRs that are available to purchase. These are usually super powerful moves. They are one-time use only TMs. And also, they have a whole bunch of Pokeballs. The Pokeballs are very cheap. Dusk Balls are some of the best Pokeballs in the game. 
and only at 50 watts, I recommend buying all of them that you can. This guy appears in a lot of different areas and all of his different locations have different Pokeballs. So this guy right here in the Dappled Grove, these trees here in the Dappled Grove usually have apples and on rare occasion, you may find yourself a, I believe it's called a tart apple. That's a special apple. But anytime you see little patches of flowers around a tree, you always wanna check those patches of flowers. That was a jar of honey, nice. And then of course you'll find traditional Pokeballs of items. These do not respawn, no matter what. That was a white herb, kind of a lame item to find. The Watchtower Ruins, even though it's literally sandwiched in between two areas that are lower level, this is a higher level area, so even the common Pokemon like this Ghastly right here is a strong looking Pokemon. And he can wipe my team very easily, but we got away. Oh, and there was another Ghastly. So, that's reasons you should avoid these areas, especially at lower levels. Now say you're in a situation like right there, where you're about to encounter a very strong looking Pokemon, your Pokemon is not doing great. Once you have the fast travel, which after you complete the Monostoke uh, cutscene, you get fast travel. You could just fast travel back here to the meetup spot, literally like a centimeter from encountering a Pokemon. Talk to this lady, she reheals your entire team. This guy right here is another watch trader. He has dive balls. Here we go, here's a, here's a really interesting person. This is breeder Chloe. Breeder Chloe has all three starter Pokemon. And at various points in the game, at different levels and different amount of gym badges that you have, you're gonna be able to battle her. She always gives you a lot of money. She always has the Evolve forms, forms of the three starters, which if you do not encounter her, you're gonna be able to see your three, your rival's three, and Leon's final form. So say for example, you pick Grookey, cause why wouldn't you? You wouldn't be able to see Score Bunny or Score Bunny's evolution, but you would see Score Bunny's final form. Now here at a very low level, the Pokemon are only level 13, and I guarantee your Pokemon, er, if you're not at level 13, maybe not take her on because starter Pokemon are inherently stronger than, you know, regular wild Pokemon because they have better stats. By the way, I have battle animations off right now because, well, <laughs> I, it's a new game and I need to cover a lot of stuff and I can't spend my time on the animations. But the animations do look beautiful. They really do. Like, especially in the Max Ray battles. Oh, this is a beautiful game overall. Like, bro, you're gonna pick on a tree? Who cares about what the trees look like? Seriously. Like, look at that character model. Look at the depth of field effect that they had. It's beautiful. $2,600 or Poke Dollars or Quid. Nice. And she's gonna disappear. Now, if you head down here, there's gonna be an extremely powerful Gavantula. I think it's like over level 40, so definitely avoid that. Are these Machops super strong? Can you come here yet? Oh, you can come here, nice. So yeah, right here you can get yourself a Machop and evolve it to Machoke. In the earlier areas, you could probably find a Tyrogue and by level 20 that becomes Hitmonchan, Lee, or Top. I'm really pushing fighting types because, well, this game has a lot of steel type Pokemon that you encounter, so having a fighting type on your team might not be a bad idea. Also in the wild area, there's various weather types and those weather types do translate into battle. Like where I am right now, there's the thunderstorm. So in battle, it's raining, which increases the power of water moves and decreases the power of fire moves. And there's electricity on the battlefield, which, oh, Pokemon can't be put to sleep or are affected by yawn. So that may affect your ability to catch Pokemon. Oh, and yeah, electric moves are 50% more powerful. Okay, awesome. The weather can actually really affect like even casual gameplay. So say for example, you're trying to catch Pokemon and you have false swipe as an attack to you know bring a Pokemon's HP down to one. However, there's hail on the field. That hail will knock out the Pokemon. And then you're just kind of SOL, out of luck. Hey, it's a Kingler. It's so awesome seeing fully evolved Pokemon walking around in the world. Like, I know I should avoid those. There's a Gyarados over here. There's a Steelix right here. Ah. Uh, actually, this is where we're supposed to be. So right here at the giant seat where the Steelix is, we want to come back here. And in behind this patch of grass, avoid everything. Yep. Now this is pod racing. You can find the TM for Bulldoze, which is a pretty fantastic ground type move that can be learned by a lot of Pokemon who are not ground types. Okay. 
And again, again, through the field. Dang it. Oh, he was a glowing one. Knocking out a level 38 Pokemon before my first gym badge. Uh, this game is magical like that. And anytime you knock out a Pokemon with the waves around them, you get Watts. That's the reason I recommend doing it. Yeah, anytime you come across an inactive den, press A in front of it for your 50 plus Watts. But the real thing we're coming for is right where this Vicavolt is. This Pokeball. Serving of leftovers. Leftovers are typically very hard to get in Pokemon games, and the fact that there's one out in the open that you can get in the first hour with pretty much no difficulty at all, I think is fantastic. I'm gonna give that to Corvusquire, because he's a good boy. Good girl. It's a female. Wow, Vicavolt is fast. Glad I have my bike. There's usually a Corviknight right here. Yep. You don't want to mess with that. While adventuring in the wild area, you are going to be able to find evolutionary stones, including right up here. This is a thunderstone. It's always a thunderstone. See this girl right here? She will trade you watts for random items. And she's a fisher, so she usually has some pretty good stuff. Two big pearls. Big pearls worth a fair amount of money. Conkolder. So like, Right there is a Pokemon that normally requires you to trade for it to evolve, and you can just catch it out in the wild. I'm gonna have a full guide as far as all of the Pokemon that you do not have to evolve because you can catch them in the wild. Conkolder definitely being one of them. Right back here is the TM for Facade, which is the move that makes it so that if you're poisoned or paralyzed, then the power is doubled. More berry trees. There's a whole bunch of great loot that you can pick up as soon as you start out the game. It's just important to, uh, not die. Pro tip, don't die. A max revive. A water stone, there we go. Oh, Noivern? If you wanted to do this playthrough as an evolution user, I already have the Thunderstone and the water stone. Speaking of evolutionary stones, if we make our way over to where the breeder is here in the wild area, you're gonna find the digging bros here on the right. The one on the right usually goes further but gets less awesome stuff, and the one on the left gets more awesome stuff but doesn't go as far. They charge 500 watts for you to do one dig, so they're pretty expensive. And at the early games, you're not, in the early level, you're not gonna be actually utilizing their services. But later on in the game, when you have, you know, 20,000, 30,000 watts, ooh, an ultra ball then it's going to be fantastic. I definitely recommend before really progressing with the story to like come in here, here's a great ball and like just mess around, collect Watts, get some items, see all the beautiful Pokemon that can kill you if they look at you the wrong way. They're, like there's Noctowls, Lanoons, Encinos, a wild Lipard. Oh, Sorry, no, those were Mincinos. Here's a Cincino. This big rock sometimes has leaks around it for cooking. Here's another Watt Trader, located right here in the Giant's Cap, right next to the Lake of Outrage. And this guy usually has Quick Balls. Oh, Heal Balls. Never mind. Thought you were useful. Maybe their items do switch around. Like, that's the final form of the bug you find on the first route. Here's the bug you find on the first route. Now, as far as the trees and the berries that come out of them, I'm not 100% if different trees have different berries or if they have different percentages of berries that can come out. I still need to research that a little bit more for an upcoming video. Right here's a Dawnstone. Now, you see over there? That's, uh, that's one of the best areas in the wild area. That's called the Lake of Outrage. Up there, in addition to that small patch of grass over there, is some of the strongest Pokemon in the wild area, some of the rarest Pokemon in the wild area, including Ditto, a whole bunch of evolved Pokemon. Evolutions can also spawn over there, so there is some really fantastic stuff that later on in the game you're gonna be able to encounter. Now, this crazy dragon head right here is where you're supposed to go much later in the game. This is actually after you complete the third gym, this is where you need to venture to, Hammerlock. And this guy will actually check your credentials if you have the fire badge before you can even enter. And he can fast travel you back to Monostoke, which is cool. If you're here before you get fast travel, he will just bring you where you need to be. This guy right here in front of both Monostoke and this city, he is the cooking guru. 
These guys are going to sell you a whole bunch of ingredients and the one outside of Monostoke will actually be able to rate your curry decks. Ah, netballs. Netballs are dope. For waters and bug type Pokemon. There are some Pokemon in the wild area that only show up after you have a certain amount of badges. Once we come down here to the Dusty Bowl, this area is a little unique because of the shining spots that happen, which also allow you to find fossil items. That's a great ball. Usually by the big rocks over here. Oh, there's a Flygon just chilling out in the open. Here's a Shuckle, poor little guy. Hey, can you, can you come over here? Yeah, yeah, come on. You can do it below, buddy. Come on, come on, I believe in you. Come on, don't you, uh, yep, come on. You can do it. Yeah, you're almost there. Bye. Here's a Sunstone. You're also gonna see some areas like this little pond right here, that on the other side you clearly see a TM. And there's also probably a very strong Pokemon over there. Again, that's gonna be after you get the ability to, to drive over water. <laughs> Here's a Jangmo'o, or Hakamo'o, whatever the final form is. It's one of my favorite things to just ride my bike through the wild area. That's in part the reason I'm making this video. Ah, oh, here we go, fossilized bird. That's one of the four fossil pieces in this game. If you didn't know, I made a video theorizing about how fossils combine to make hybrid Pokemon. And uh, that's exactly what happens in this game. You make hybrid Pokemon. I'll be having a full video coming out shortly as far as all the fossil pieces, where to get them, and the Pokemon that they make. Right here is another great example of a pond in uh, in the middle of an area that has very strong Pokemon on it. What Pokemon's over there? I don't know. I can't ride on water yet. Also, riding through the wild area, you just start to hear the sounds of all the Pokemon. And you hear their cries, and you're like, I know what Pokemon that is just based on, like, the sound of them. Oh, here's Chloe again. Boom, we could take her on a second time. It's a Mudsdale. He's a good pony. Still, while you're in your first time, you don't even have the bike yet. You have access to max raid battles, which you're more than welcome to co come over here to areas that you should not be in yet and take a look at the Pokemon here. Because, say for example, if you want an all bug team, or if you want to have, oh, there's a Dusclops right there. Or if you want to have a ghost type Pokemon early in the game. My face is covering the typing. Boom, there it is, a ghost flying. That's a Drifloom. If you want a Drifloom this early in the game, you can just do that. So even at these very, very early levels, if you want to come in and you want to take down, you know, a, and get a ghost type Pokemon, which it, I don't know. I feel like there's always been this thing about ghost type Pokemon early that it just never happens. Maybe it be because they completely ignore normal type moves and a lot of low level Pokemon have normal type moves. Oh, by the way, I can confirm that if you are doing a max raid battle, then everyone who is doing the max raid battle gets to catch the Pokemon. Which is great, because on different people's switches are different raids that show up. Oh, here's another, another Fisher person. A pearl string, that's money. So guys, I hope my early game guide to the wild area is gonna be helpful for your playthrough for Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield. If you haven't done so, be sure to hit the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.